Welcome back. Now, two boys died in a shooting in Davidton on the very first day of the new school year. The deceased pupils were from Lisiba Secondary School in Davidton. The chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education in Parliament, Bongiwe Mbingo Kikaba, has condemned the violence. But the boys' families say the deaths were an accident. For more reaction, we're joined by Gauteng Education spokesperson uh, Steve Mabona, the General Secretary of the National Association of School Governing Bodies, Matakange Matakange, as well as Satsu Tolani Fagute, uh, who all join us now virtually. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time here on ENCA. Now, obviously, um, you know, after the family gave us clarity, the families gave us clarity on what happened. This begs the question of uh, children and their safety. And that them, I'm going to start with you. The fact that, you know, uh, parents should be stakeholders. This is not something that only schools can be able to handle. Um, morning. Uh, and to all our viewers. Yes, indeed. I mean, it's a partnership that we always uh, work with parents. Uh, parents must take the lead. Because you know that 80% uh, of, of what um, transpires in our schools lies on the shoulders of uh, the SGB. SGB will then be representing parents because you know that they are, you know, elected or nominated by parents to represent their, their needs at school. So we work very closely with our sister departments, uh, community safety, uh, the police, and um, the community at large to say uh, safety in and around our school. It's a, it's a priority. That's why when we have so much vandalism in some of the areas, we then encourage the community to assist us to report to the police because all our schools have a police liaison officer, if we were to put it that way, someone that the principal will immediately call and they will be in a position to make sure that the swift response in, in, in our schools. But like as you've already indicated that uh, this uh, matter now with the latest developments, you know, the family explanation, uh, we relied on what we received firsthand from the school and the district. So that's why we went with that in the, in the public space. But unfortunately, it turned out that it's not the... Uh, what we were, you know, say. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you know, I just want to come to, um, uh, you know, Mr. Fagute from Satu. You know, uh, teachers are also part of the community. Um, and I know this might be overworking the teachers, but is there some advice probably as Satu that you have to your members uh, for teachers who do want to go the extra mile um, as they're in these communities and they see the pupils that they teach at their schools, for instance, uh, to try and give these boys uh, advice? I mean, to tell them that something as dangerous as a gun is not something cool that you can show off with amongst your friends. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hoffes. Let me greet you. Let me greet the viewers and the, the fellow panelists as well. And uh, thank you for that uh, for that question. Look, our our view, Mr. Hoffes, it's, 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 it's linked to exactly what also Ndate Mabona there was saying, that um, uh, the school is by all means a, a microcosm of the society. What happens in the school is that uh, there's an exact translation of what also happens in societies. So what we are saying is that we are calling on our members um, to, 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 to certainly remain calm under very tough circumstances. This is, by the way, just the tip of the iceberg. However, what we also want to put in very clearly is that um, the stakeholders, such as the lead department, being the Department of Basic Education in this case, has got a particular responsibility. And that responsibility is about also making sure that the national school safety framework is implementable. You see, we've got very, very nice frameworks. We've got very, very nice uh, policies. But often those do not necessarily link with the particular resourcing of public education, for instance. So what we are saying is that we are calling on also for increased parental involvement. I like the point about participation through SGPs. But then there's also a critical element of community involvement, Masiho, because what happens like we said, in the school is a direct translation of also what happens in our societies as well. So what we're saying is that let us all have a collaborative uh, approach. Let us all accept the fact that we all have got a particular responsibility towards this, um, uh, this particular space. And lastly, 
it is also important for us that as much as we bring all the stakeholders, including law enforcement, there's an issue of psychosocial support services. And I'm sure that Dr. Mabona can agree with me immediately to say that it has been one of the most lacking interventions by the Department of Basic Education for one reason or the other, probably linked to even resourcing and, and inability to work in a collaborative manner. Those are some of the few uh, points that we want to table at this stage, Masihon. Mm. Let me give you the platform to respond to what Mr. Fagude is saying about the frameworks and some policies um, that are there and look beautiful but are not being implemented properly. You know, like I said, that the, the department cannot always be blamed. Um, we need to work together, like as he has already indicated. But our psychosocial unit works very well. Um, in all the incidences that we, we have, we've been able to, to, to support all our schools. The district offices have that element as well. If they are uh, not coping, we have a partnership with the Department of Social Development. They, they also work with us. So from where we are sitting, our psychosocial uh, responsibility, it's not negated in any way. So um, probably then the, our stakeholders need to come closer to us and understand on how we operate. Because some will want to say we want that um, uh, service to be at the school level. Meanwhile, we will normally say there's no need for them to be at school level. As long as they're at district level, they will be in a position to support all their schools in the district because they will be then focusing on the, the their schools. So that's what we are saying. The policies we implement but we also need our stakeholders to come forward and they work with us. Mm. Uh, let me go to Ndata Matakanye. Um, Mr. Matakanye, as the school governing body, uh, um, you know, the, the National Association of the School Governing Bodies, what have you been advising people who look after the interests of uh, the pupils and parents at different schools, uh, you know, in terms of parents also playing a role uh, in making sure that, you know, uh, society doesn't end up infiltrating into the behaviors of pupils at schools? Good morning, uh, Maseho, and good morning, the Just Soli, uh, uh, Steve, and, and Fakude, uh, as well as compliments to the whole nation. Um, I want to start by saying National Association of School Governing Bodies has called a school safety summit all over the country. They will be sitting February and March in all the provinces. And I think SATU will be part of, of, of that summit. Uh, department will be part of that summit. You will remember, uh, Maseho, that uh, 2018, there was a chisha that was uh, 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 bushat in, in KZN. I mean, no, 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 in Northwest, where we requested the minister to call for a national conversation, and that national convention said, and uh, there were resolutions that were taken uh, in that conversation. So we feel as National Association of School, school Government Bodies, we, time is now that they must be seriously implemented. It is unacceptable that uh, children must always go into the school uh, with the weapons of war and without being detected. And we know, as uh, Steve has said, uh, the policies to uh, school safety are the custodian of our school governing bodies. But not only alone, we must work with the Department of, of Basic Education. We must also work with police. Uh, we must work with communities. Now, and we have the committees in those schools, but without the support of some of these uh, structures, uh, the school governing bodies really are weakened. And it is true that uh, through those committees, uh, school safety committees, then we'll be able to detect uh, these children uh, coming into the school uh, with weapons of war, and it is true that uh, these children copy the communities. 
I mean, these schools are not vandalized by by these children. They are not vandalized by the members of of the school, neither the teachers nor these schools are vandalized by the communities. So these children are seeing how the communities are living. Therefore, they copy. And uh, what the community is doing, then the children will practice it in schools. Uh, and this is exactly what is happening. So you must understand that where this thing has happened, this is exactly what, there are a lot and a lot of guns in that community. Mm -hmm. And also the school safety summits in Tatamatakanya, do they work? Um, is there no other way that we can try to teach our children uh, that violence is not something cool? I mean, according to the family statement, uh, this young boy was basically showing off to his friends. Uh, his grandfather's gun ended up loading it. And while they were playing with something as dangerous as a gun, um, it went off. And now, uh, you know, the families have lost two young people who could have been anything really later in life. I think through the summit, uh, and uh, we will emphasize that there is no need for us to hire uh, securities with guns, uh, with no kiris, with all. Uh, in addition to that, we must start educating. We must really educate. I mean, these very families where they let these children to carry these guns to school. Uh, they lacked really how to they educate their children. Because if maybe the father is a policeman, uh, there's no way that uh, he could not bring the, the gun at home. But you always have to teach that this gun, uh, this is the purpose of this gun, not for everybody in the family, but for me, as it is part of my work, and you continue teaching so that these children know that now, uh, then there is other uh, uh, employment that are related to the guns, are related to the knives, are related to any other thing, not to them. But look, this child, uh, they took the gun to school and show off what really what happened because he was not trained for how to operate the gun. Then the gun went off and and we lost two young lives, you know. All right, but let me, I think let me now back. we must go and teach now. All right. Uh, let me go back to Mr. Fagute. I mean, uh, Satu uh, is obviously uh, one of those uh, big unions that represent uh, a lot of teachers across our country. And as you heard from Mr. Matakanya, and I'll, I, I would remember that story because I did cover it as well. Um, that teacher who was stabbed to death by a pupil uh, in the Northwest. This also goes back to the safety of teachers and that breakdown in relationship between teacher and pupil that uh, is obviously probably also caused by society because, you know, Ngesu Zulu, you know, it doesn't respect all elders as we were taught when we were younger. Um, your response to that and the safety of teachers themselves as well? Well, naturally, Masiho, it is one of our biggest concerns. We have been raising this, um, uh, some of these issues for quite some time. In fact, uh, you know, Dr. Mantagani, as he speaks about uh, summits, uh, the, the Department of Basic Education, as we speak right now, has just convened a, 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 a basic education that we have every year religiously. And uh, we still want to... Um, I said, you know, sometimes as stakeholders, we also need to be held accountable. I mean, I, we insist as a union that on the element, for instance, on civil social support services, in 2019, when we went to our ninth national congress as such, we actually went in to, to, to actually uh, understand what is happening in the psychosocial support service unit of the Department of Basic Education. They only had, at that time, nationally, about 1,700 approximately directly employed psychosocial support services personnel in the department. Now, Masiwa, that is for 13 million learners. That is for just below 500,000 teachers. So what we are saying is that there the, the certainly is a particular challenge that we need to deal with. As educators, we are saying that the school is also our work environment. It is also about our profession. And obviously, when we feel that we are unsafe, because any time anything can happen, that is what we are also seeing uh, uh, with all these uh, social media uh, videos, etc. So it is important for us, Masiho, that firstly, there must be increased parental involvement in Dr. Mantagani. And we know 
we discuss these things regularly. We are also saying that there must be an element whereby stakeholders take accountability for some of the issues that we agree on. I mean, we insist, myself that the national school safety framework needs to be implementable. It can't just be a document. And it has got all these uh, mechanisms, such as early warning systems, how to pick up when uh, a, a certain learners could be having problems, et cetera. Because as educators, ours, we want to focus on the curriculum. Lastly, myself, it is also important that we have a, 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 a curriculum that is transformed, a curriculum that is values, ethics-based, and Ubuntu-based uh, curriculum, so that our learners can know that violence, a uh, bragging about uh, weapons of, um, uh, of war, as Dr. Mantagania calls it, is not how we want to see ourselves as a country moving forward. So for us, Masiro, let us all take accountability. Let us all take responsibility. Mm. And Dr. Mavana, let me end with you um, as I'm running out of time. I mean, the ratio that Ms. F Mr. Fabute gives us uh, is quite alarming. 1,700 psychosocial services uh, employees that are supposed to cater for 13 million children, uh, 500,000 teachers, if I'm not mistaken, that's what he said. So I'd like you to respond to that and whether the department thinks it's enough. Are you increasing that as well? But also, uh, lastly, and Dr. Mavana, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, there was that uh, debate about maybe getting... Uh, security that can be more, um, you know, more forceful at schools or maybe uh, things such as metal detectors to make sure that guns and knives don't enter the school. Should we go back into having that debate uh, to see if maybe there's, there's something that we need to do at our school so that these uh, weapons don't come into school, but if they're found at school, they don't go back um, out, uh, outside in society as well? Yeah, I think very much, Masifo. Um, I, I saw your mark uh, that uh, uh, Look, um, we agree that the psychosocial element must be uh, enforced to a certain extent. But we are not a level where we can have that at school level. I mean, how can we have two, over 2.3 schools and there will not be a position to, to, to have that in all our schools? That's why we felt that we... we enhance what we have in our district offices yes we, will, we should be in a position to cover all our schools uh, making sure that it, it, that resource is then allocated to schools but for our employees uh, teachers are our employees and they tap into our wellness program so in the wellness program we do partner with um, uh, um, professionals that when you interact with them they will be in a position to to assist you so that resource is there, uh, available for educators. In the event of anything, our wellness program will then kick in and assist them. So let's not mix the two. But we really, yes, agree that uh, we can, uh, we need to enhance in our district offices, make sure that the psychosocial um, unit is, is, uh, is uh, appropriate. They can be in a position to can manage. But also, as parents, we need to take responsibility, like as uh, my fellow colleagues are saying, we need to take responsibility as parents um, and make sure that we teach our children about how you conduct yourself in life throughout, whether you are at home or you are at school or you are visiting, wherever you are, you should be in a position to enhance and make sure that we educate our children on how to, to conduct themselves. The security element of it, there was a summit, yes, in Gauteng as well. Um, before, you know, COVID, and decisions were taken there and we're implementing what was recommended there. That's why we all, all our schools have police liaison officer that's responsible for our schools. And we have detected the swiftness in terms of response when the community uh, alert us on things that are happening in and around our schools. But weapons, are when, when the principal see that there's something that... Uh, is not going as per the plan. The principal can call the police um, immediately. They will come and, and search. They don't even need to bring any um, a document that they are allowed to come and search the school because as per the arrangement and the agreement between the schools and the police, that po police are allowed when they are called by the principal to come to school and make sure that they conduct those searches. And when weapons found, then the police need to process those accordingly. Mm-hmm.
All right, I'm going to ask the three gentlemen, uh, if you don't mind, for us to just take a quick break, but for you to uh, just stay with us so that we continue with this very important debate. We're talking about safety uh, of children, not only at school, but also outside of school. This is after uh, a pupil from the Lisiba uh, Secondary School in Davidson uh, found a gun which belonged to his grandfather, uh, played with it, and himself, he shot himself after mistakenly or uh, accidentally shooting his friend earlier. Um, and that was on the first day of school. That, uh, of course, was Matakanya Matakanya from the National Association of School Governing Bodies, Satus Polani Fagute, as well as Steve Mabona, the spokesperson of the Gauteng Education Department.